Hello and welcome to this full tutorial and overview of Apple Reminders. If you're looking to switch over and use this as your task manager, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you everything that you're going to need to know to master Apple Reminders. So as you can see here, I have it pulled up on my iPhone, but just so you know, this will work just the same on your Mac and I'll show you some kind of Mac or desktop specific kind of tips and tricks as we go through the video. Also, if you're looking for something specific or want to go back to something that I cover in the video, I will have timestamps down below where you can jump between the different sections. All right, so let's get into it. Apple Reminders is a task list and task manager. It has become one of, in my opinion, the better options, especially free option if you're using the Mac ecosystem. So let's go ahead and talk about the key feature overviews. We can create lists, subtasks, we can have different notifications per list, location-based reminders, and just everything that you would need in a simple task manager is here within Apple Reminders. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's create our first reminder. So you're going to open up Apple Reminders, and you're not going to see any list except for the Today view and maybe a Home view. And I'm going to show you how to create all of your different views and lists and all of that as we go. So the first thing you want to know to do is how to create a new reminder. You just tap the blue new reminder button there at the bottom of the screen or the app, and then you begin typing in your new reminder. You're going to give your reminder a title, and then if you want, you can add some notes. So here we have a new reminder called Pick Up the Kids, and that's the title of the reminder. And if I tap into notes here, I can say, don't forget to pick up the kid's name. You get the point, right? You can add notes to each reminder just to further iron out exactly what you need to do and different details. Next, you're going to see the details tab. If you tap into details, this is where all of the magic happens. So for date up there, you can go ahead and enable date. If you don't enable date, it's just going to add it to your today view or your home view, and you're not going to give a specified kind of due date, right? So we can go ahead and say this is going to be done. It needs to be done today right here on Monday, October 7th, 2024. I can tap that there. Or I can say this is not due until next week, which will say the 14th. But we're going to go ahead and say it is due today just for purposes of the video and then time. So if you're going to pick them up at, say, 11 o'clock, so you have to pick the kids up by 11, you give it a time, you enable that time, and you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and show you now just a few more things you can do. Early reminder, if we tap into early reminder, this will send you a notification on your devices a few minutes before, an hour before, or even two days, weeks, or month before. So let's just say five minutes before. Actually, you know what? We need to know about an hour before. We have a little bit of travel time there. And then does this event ever repeat as far as a reminder? I'm going to talk about repeated reminders here shortly. You can do like habits and things such as that where you tap into repeat and you say this will repeat every single week. So it'll be weekly on the Monday. Uh, I need to pick them up at 11 every Monday. So it's going to be repeated every week. Now, if you want to end that repeat, you can tap on end repeat and you can choose repeat forever, or you can go and say, hey, it's only for basketball season in repeat date. We're going to end this on the 28th, right? So you can add a date in which this task, repeating task, ends. Next will be tags. We'll talk about those in a little bit. Location, we'll talk about all of those. And then we'll talk about everything down below here in a second. So once we're done with that reminder, we tap the add button there at the top of that screen, at the top of the screen. And now if we go to our today view, you can see that pick up the kids now comes up right here under the morning time. So one of the things that reminders does that I really is it gives you a day breakdown. So you have morning, afternoon, and tonight. So if you add a time for a specific reminder, it'll show up in the designated area where it should, depending on what part of the day that reminder should come up. Now, how do we mark a reminder done? Very easy, right? You just tap the circle there, tap the circle next to it, and boom, it'll automatically disappear within a few seconds, just like that. All right, so now we know how to make a new reminder. How do we add a new list? So if we go back here to my reminders home screen here, you can see I have one that's called grocery list. If I tap into grocery list here, you can see that I have a grocery list that is shared with my wife. You can see I'm sharing it with her by her little icon there at the upper kind of area of the screen. How do we create new lists? So what you want to do to add a list is down at the bottom right hand side, you're going to see an option that says add list. Tap the add list option here. So let's give our list a name and we're going to call it groceries. And then the list type here, if we tap into list type, you can see there are standard lists, grocery lists, 
and smart list, which we'll talk about here later in the video. So since this is for groceries, we're going to go ahead and tap the groceries type list here. And we are going to give it a color. We're going to give it this nice little bright yellow color here. And then as you can see below, you can even give it an icon. So we'll give it the food icon here, and then we'll tap done so. Now you can see we have a new list in our Reminders app that is titled Groceries, where now if we go into that list, so if we go out here to our list here, type, you tap into that grocery list that we just created, and we go to New Item. So we go to New Item. It'd be like a new reminder in a normal standard list, right? And then we'll just go ahead and start adding things to the said list, and then we'll just add them, hit Enter, and we can start adding new lists. The cool thing about a grocery list in Apple Reminders is that when you type in the type of food product or product that it is, it'll try to, like it did with carrots here, it puts the carrots in the produce section. And then if we go here and we type in, let's just say green beans is something we need to pick up and then hit enter here, you can see that shows up in what it thinks to be the correct category. Now, if you want to, you can go up here and tap the three dots with a circle around it, and you can adjust and customize what you, how your list looks and the way things are presented. We can view as columns here. If we go to view as columns, you can see the different areas of a list as a column, but we want to go ahead and view as a list. And we can also go show list info, select items, or manage sections. So if we go to manage sections here, we can go to edit sections, and you can see that there are different sections that were auto-created in this list. If I wanted to, I can tap those three lines there, and I can go to hide empty sections if you want, and then I can actually hold on to a section here and rename it if I want to. So tap the three dots again, and as you can see here, I can do a few different things as well as sorting it. So I can go to sort by, and it says sort by manual, sort by due date, creation date, priority, or title. I'm gonna sort by manual here for our grocery list just for the purposes of the video. Another thing that you can do is you can show or hide completed. So if we go to show completed here, and we go ahead and we say we've picked up the carrots, but not the green beans, it's going to show that here in the list, filter it to the bottom of the section, and it's gonna show it as checked off as well as a little bit grayed out so you know what you've gotten and what you haven't, right? So that's under the showed completed option here, or hide completed. Next will be save as template. If you are creating a list and you're going to wanna to create more lists like that, you can go to save as a template here and go ahead and go and give it a name and include the completed reminders if you want, but again, I wouldn't do that, and go to save, and now when we go back here and we create a list here, we can go to templates and you can see that is a list template that I can go back on. So let's just say you have hobbies that you're trying to uh, do or habits you're trying to get in, in, in your life. You can create a habit list that you can recreate over and over again each week and you can make sure that you do those habits each and every week. So as far as lists go, that's really all you'll need to know about creating a new list. Now let's talk about your homepage here when you open up Apple Reminders and how to customize it to get the list that you want to see at the very top. Now at the very top, you're going to see a couple of lists that are featured. You're going to see the today view, which is everything that you need to do today. You're going to go back here and you can see I have a home feed right here. And you can see everything that I've added will be in the home feed. And I'll show you how to customize that as well. You basically just force press that list like I'm doing here, and you can see that I can actually pin that list, and it's going to show it at the very top under my featured list. Now, every list that is pinned will be at the top, and it'll show as a larger kind of bracket or a rectangle as opposed to just under the listicle area here where your different lists are below. So if I want to remove it or unpin it, I just tap and hold or force press and then go to unpin, and that'll just move it back down to the generic uh, order of list down below. Very easy, very simple, and if you wanted to, you could even tap and hold these pinned lists here and rearrange them, move them around if you want to. The different order of those lists are signified by the Today View first, and then everything going after that, because they know they, that you want to see that Today View. All right, so we've talked about new reminders, we've talked about adding a list, now let's talk about syncing with iCloud. So Reminders is automatically synced across all of your Apple devices. So if we minimize my phone right now and we go right here to my Reminders app on my Mac, you can see the groceries list that we just created has automatically populated and been created here on the Mac version of the app. If I wanted to, I can right click here, pin that list, and any changes that I make here in this list, let's just say we want to pick up a bag of sugar here, whatever you want to do, and I hit enter, 
Now, if we pop back into my iPhone version here of the Apple's reminders, you can see if I refresh that, it should show up. And again, it may take a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes, depending on how long it takes. There it goes, and it populated here on the app version of the thing. So remember, it is synced with iCloud. All right. All right. So let's talk about reminder details adding notes and URLs. So I'm going to now demonstrate how you can add more context to your notes. So let's just say I have one here, pay the prime credit card. I created that one earlier. If I tap the I or information icon here with a circle around it, I can then go into that specific reminder and I can add certain things. Under notes, I can say that I want to pay with a specific credit card, right? And then under URL, I can then add a URL that will basically be clickable. So let's just say I'm not going to do it here, but we'll say creditcardwebsite.com. And then if I tap done here, you'll see that link will be here within that reminder where I can basically just tap on that link and go directly from the reminder here to whatever URL that is. So adding notes and URLs add a lot of context to those specific notes. And then if you want to, you can tap into that reminder, tap the I once more, and you can always go back if you want to here, and you can basically just remove that URL and it'll go back to a normal note. So adding context with notes and URLs is important. Next, let's talk about a little more about the due dates and times. So what you would do here is you would tap into a specific reminder, hit the information key, and under date and time, you would enable both of those, and you would select a date by going to the date option, just like I showed you earlier, and then you would select a time by tapping into time, and then selecting when that should be completed or when you want to have that task done. Now, as far as the early reminder and repeat, let's talk about early reminder once more. Under early reminder here, this one is important. If you're going to be needing to be reminded of something, this can send you a notification on your device 15 minutes before you need that to be completed. So just remember that needs to be done and when it needs to be done by. So you can see I took it off the today list. And now if I go back to list and go to home, that it doesn't show up under the today view because I changed the date. So that's very important for you to remember as well. Repeated reminders, those are things that will repeat daily, weekly, monthly, very simple. You basically go in here into the reminder, hit the information option here. And right here where it says repeat with the squiggly arrows, you tap that there and you decide this is only going to be done on weekdays. And the beauty of the reminders app is that it's really detailed that you can do it hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, every three months, or even yearly. If you're like, I want to make sure that I call this person on their birthday, you can go remind me every year on this date, on this time. So I know and remember to do that every single year. All right, now we're going to move into advanced features. The first one I'm going to talk about is subtasks. So let's just say in this reminder specifically here, I go into the pick up kids or let's go to the pay the credit card reminder here. If I tap that option there, I tap in the information on the right side there. I can scroll down and I can see an option here that says subtasks. So this works great for like projects. So if there are multiple things that need to be done, let's say you're finishing a website design and let's go ahead and just create that right now. So we're going to go ahead and go to new reminder and we're going to go to website design. So we're going to go ahead and create that reminder there. And then we're going to hit the information option here to bring up the details. We're going to scroll down under subtask it will be towards the bottom. It shows as a brown kind of icon there, go into subtask. And now we can add reminder subtasks within a specific main task or project. So now we go to add reminder and we'll go ahead and just number them just for simplicity's sake here. And we'll go ahead and add a few subtasks. Now go back to details here, tap done. Now, as you can see, the task here as website design will show up as a main task that we can close or open by tapping the arrow here to expand it. And we can see that we have subtasks. So let's just say two is done. We tap two. And now that specific subtask is completed and we can go through and complete all of the subtasks to make sure that we get everything that needs to be done within that main task. So that's the advanced feature of subtask. Next, we're going to talk about priority levels. So I know that paying the credit card is very important. So I'm going to tap into that reminder, tap the information tab to the right there. And now we're going to scroll down to where you see priority under priority that it has the priority set as none. So if we tap into priority here, we can assign three levels of priority or four. Really, you can have none with no priority. You can have low, medium or high. Now, if we tap high, we know it's a high priority. We tap done. You can see now back in our list, it has three exclamation points right to the left of that, letting you know 
That's a very important task. We got to get to that today. Not only today, we probably need to jump on it this morning. Very important. So one of the beautiful things about reminders is that if we tap here into the home list, tap the three dots with a circle around it, we can actually sort our list, go to sort by, we can sort them by priority. So everything that is high priority filters to the top of the list and the lower the priority level, the lower it goes on the list. So it's a wonderful way to sort your list, making sure that you get the things done that are most important to your personal or business life. Next will be tags. All right, tagging things for organization it's really been updated a lot with iOS 18 and, and the integration with Apple Notes and things like that. We can go here and we can tap into a reminder and we can hit the information key here and we can see midway through we have an option that says tags. So if we go to tags here, we're going to create a new tag by just tapping in here and we're going to give this tag kids and we're going to go to done, right? Tap done here. Now you can see there is a hashtag or a pound cent, whatever you want to call it, kids, right? So if we tap into that there, that's letting you know that is hashtagged as the kids and you're adding tags to further discern which, you know, what those reminders are about. And when we talk about smart list here in a few minutes, you're going to see why tags are very important. That's how you tag and organize a little better within reminders. Next, we're going to be talking about notifications and alerts. So custom notifications within reminders. I'm going to show you how to set up alerts and notifications including custom time or specific dates. So we talked about it briefly in scheduling that there, but what we can do is if we go to a reminder here, say the pick up kids reminder and hit the information option here, we're going to see that there are a couple of things that we can do to get notified. Not only 15 or 30 minutes prior to the task, but we can also say here under location, go and enable location and say to basically one of the things you're going to have to do first is go to settings and make sure your precise location is turned on for the reminders app. So go to settings here. And then once you've done that, go to location here. And then basically while using the app precise location and then go back to reminders and you should be good to go. So what this allows you to do is under location, it says when you're getting in your car. So say every time I get in my car, I'm about to leave. Let me know to do this. Buckle up, right? <laughs> it may remind me to buckle up every time I get in the car or when I'm getting out of the car or when I get home, knowing where your address is. Or you can do a current address by going to current address or under custom where you can basically choose a location and say, hey, when I get here, remind me to text this person or remind me to do this, right? The location tab for me, reminder and custom notifications is a really powerful feature here within reminders. So that's the location. Or you can do when messaging. So next time I message, let's just say next time I message my wife. So next time I message Kaylin here, I want to be reminded to, to do this, to pick up the kids or to do whatever this task is. So you can get reminded wherever you are geographically, or you can get reminded when messaging specific people in your, but again, you got to make sure that you enable that again here when under that specific reminder. So that's how you do custom notifications and alerts. List sharing and collaboration. This one is important. So again, I showed you earlier that this list right here, which is my grocery list, is shared with my wife. That way she can add things on her iPhone. I can add things on my iPhone and it shows up on that shared list. And when she's at the grocery store, she knows what to get and vice versa. So what you want to do here is let's go back to our template grocery list here. Tap into it here. You want to go to the square with the arrow pointing upward. So if we tap on that square there, it'll bring up the share option here. And then you want to go to the contact or person you want to share it with. So we'll go to either messages or we'll go to my wife's already here. So I'll tap on her contact information here and it will automatically show her. So it'll automatically show her the grocery list. If you hit send, it'll go ahead and send. And then basically she'll have that to tap into on her iPhone that will open up the grocery list. Okay. So that's how you do it. And basically it'll allow you to see in the upper right hand corner here that person if i tap on it is being shared with that specific person and you can even message and call them <laughs> if you're at the grocery store and you're like oh, i gotta call them and figure out which version of this i need to get you can message them directly here from within the reminders app so i just absolutely love that next is going to be using siri and voice integration and then when you do that it'll come up and you can say hey siri remind me to take out the trash at 7 p.m 
and it shows you that you're going to be taking out the trash. So now a new reminder has been created. If I go to today, take out the trash 7 p.m. So that's a really cool feature you can do using Siri. Now, there are some more automations, things that you can get into using shortcuts and Apple automations. So you can create shortcuts to automatically create reminders when you're using certain apps and things like that. I would go to a specific video about that. This is more about mastering and how to use it for your day to day. But that is an option that I did want to mention. Next is going to be managing and customizing lists. So I've already showed you here on the list view how you can go and tap on a list and reorder it and move it around. You can tap and hold. You can unpin the list, take it down to your master list. All of those things are important. But the one thing I want to show you now is smart list. So if we create a smart list and the today view is a smart list. So right here, the today view is a smart list that only shows me tasks that are going to be due by the end of day today. Very important, that is a smart list. But if we want to create a new smart list, we go down to where we see add list, the bottom right hand corner, and we'll have a couple of options. The list type here, if we tap into it, standard, groceries, or smart list. We're gonna tap smart list. Under smart list, you're gonna see where it says edit filters. This is where you create the magic that makes the smart list work. Go to edit filters here, and we can now select from a number of filters, tags, date, time, and all of the things that you see here. We're going to create one based off of tags. So we're going to go to tags, going to type tags here, and then we're going to go to a any selected tag. So we're going to go to any selected tag, and then we're going to select the kids tag, right? And then once we've done that, we tap done, and we go ahead and we give this a name as kids and tap done. Now, that list will only show me things that are tagged with kids. And if I go back here to a reminder, and let's say this reminder has to do with kids, you want them to take the trash out, where you hit the information panel here, you go ahead and go to tags and you tag that with kids, tap done here. And now when we go back to our list here and go to the kids smart list, that's going to show up. It's a great way of organizing, getting things together. And we go to the smart list option here. We can go to edit filters and we can say we only want to see things in this list that are priority high. So all the things that I know are, man, I got to get these things done. That's that smart list here. And just say, gotta get done, right? Not fine, done. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in the correct word here and tap done. And as you can see, anything that is high priority shows up right here in that smart list. So that's everything you need to do about searching and creating smart lists. You can quickly add reminders with natural language. Remind me to call like Bob the next Wednesday at three if you're talking to Siri. You can also do different swipe gestures like on the actual page here. So if we go to our home list here and we swipe to the right we can go ahead and flag them add details or delete if we swipe to the left we can indent so if we indent those by tapping that there it'll indent that kind of to the right showing you that's under that one above but if you wanted to you, you can just swipe to the left here and delete that specific one and it says here delete this reminder or delete all future reminders if you're deleting a reminder that is a repeated reminder It'll basically give you the option to delete the one for today or basically the ones that you've created for the future as well. So we'll delete all future as well. Also, if you tap and hold or force press on a specific reminder like I'm doing here, so we'll do that, it'll bring up the options to cut, copy, mark as completed, change the due date, indent it, add a different priority. But we'll go ahead and we will mark it as completed by tapping that option there and it'll be removed from our list. So you can swipe left, right, and force press on those on your you know mobile device to bring up the options and features that you may want to use quicker than if you're going and going into them designated. Last, troubleshooting and FAQs, some certain things that I know people are going to be asking about. Basically, if you're not seeing this sync up, like if it's not syncing between your devices, I'd go to your iCloud settings and make sure that your Reminders app is being synced. Also, if you're not seeing notifications, so if we go into our notification settings like I'm doing here, scroll down to the R's to where you see the Reminder app. So we'll go to the Reminders app right here and make sure that you have this turned on as well as time sensitive notifications that should be enabled if you're in like focus mode and, and things that you've got your phone locked down. You want to make sure you're getting all notifications. Just go to your notification settings and make sure that is enabled. In summary, this is a great task manager. I highly recommend it, especially if you're using it in tandem with the other Mac ecosystem apps like Notes, the Journal, things like that. It's just a great way that's already on the devices that we already know and love. That's it. Hopefully this helped you out. If you have any further questions that I did not cover, slap those in the comment section below. If this helped you out, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.